What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to another Legends in Football Manager 2019. Today we have the start of Diego Maradona, 17 years old as you can see here, playing for Argentinos Juniors and uh, yeah we're going to see how he gets on. Uh, you can see his attribute in front of you, obviously a fantastic dribbler with the ball, uh, great off the ball as well. Uh, Maradona in his younger years was quite a prolific goal scorer in Argentina so it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on here. Uh, he is, at the age of 17, the best player in the division in terms of modern football. In terms of his attributes, I wanted to give him room to develop, room for him to grow. Uh, but regardless, he is an absolutely insane player. You can see here he's the key player. He is the club's uh, kind of key player as well in terms of their most important man on the pitch. Not entirely surprising considering who he is and uh, what he's probably going to achieve here. In terms of his current ability, um, I can't actually use the in-game editor button to show you, but it's around 140 with a potential ability of 200. So he's got monumental potential. Obviously, at the age of 17, it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on. Starting in Argentina, will he move abroad? Uh, what kind of moves will he get? Obviously, if you haven't seen the Pele experiment we did previously, it's going to be very interesting to compare Maradona to Pele in that regard. So anyway, I think to start with, we will go forward two years is see how he's getting on let me know how you think he'll do down in the description and of course as was the case of the Pele one if you've got an idea for a legend in FM you'd like to see uh, let me know it down in the comments I am also weighing up the possibility and I think I will be doing this that on Patreon uh, every month I am going to set up a poll with some suggestions from the comments and let my Patreon supporters of all tiers uh, vote on the kind of legend that we'll do that month we may even do more than one legend some months um, but all in all, uh, you know, I want to give you guys the choice of what we see. Anyway, let's go forward two years. We'll see how he's getting on at the age of 19. That was the age at which Pele made his move to Europe. Be interesting to see if Diego follows suit. Uh, so yeah, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a second. Okay, guys, so here we are back, and, well, Maradona's made the move to Porto. Of course, in real life, he did make the move to Europe. He made a number of world record transfers. It's going to be interesting to see if he does that here in this but yes, you can see the 18-year-old continuing his development quite significantly. If we just have a look at uh, some career milestones and such, you can see he won the Copa America with Argentinos Juniors. He got his first senior goal and made his senior debut. So getting some early silverware. Uh, you can see here, actually, he moved halfway through uh, his second season in Argentina, which is kind of interesting, the fact that he kind of did one and a half seasons. Porto have signed him for 8.5. Since then, he's got six goals in eight games, which is a pretty impressive return. Um, you may have noticed, I made him naturally a centre-attacking mid, because that's where he kind of played a lot of his career. But as I said, during his junior years, he did get a fair few goals, and he did play quite an attacking role. So I gave him kind of uncomfortable striking ability. It looks like, over the course of his first two years, they have kind of converted him to a striker. You can see he's yet to break into the Argentina national side, and he's not actually improved as much as I was expecting he might. You can see everything's improved just a little bit. They're not kind of masses of standout improvement. If we look at his injuries, he has had a few injuries. Nothing too crazy, I guess. But he's missed, you know, a few couple of months over the course of the first two years here. But, um, yeah, he's looking very, very good. How have Porto got on? Um, I've not actually got Portugal loaded, I don't think. Uh, no, I haven't. I've got all the major European leagues loaded. I'll be honest, I didn't really expect him to go to Porto. If we just look at his uh, competition landmarks, he's got that one Copa America win. Uh, in terms of awards, Locha Argentina, um, you can see... Uh, that's weird. Why does it have loads of random World Cup stuff from the 70s? Oh, of course, this is actual achievements in real life. That's interesting that that was added in. Of course, uh, I am using a database... Uh, that is on the Steam Workshop for Maradona. I always link the databases down below. I always tweak the attributes a little bit. So you can see here some of the past awards he won. I didn't even realise that was a thing in this database. I don't think Pele had that. But regardless, that's really cool. So we can see some of his actual achievements that he did. Will he be able to get close to that? I mean, the fact he's not broken into the national team yet is a tiny bit of a surprise. Uh, Porto, the £13 million, pounds, not a small fee. I'm curious how long Porto can keep hold of him, to be honest, because... They, whilst they're a big club, Porto, they don't have the money, you know, the resources that some of the kind of massive, massive clubs have in Europe. 
I think we'll go forward another two years and see how he's getting on. Um, maybe three. I think we'll go forward three. We'll go to the age of 21. It will be interesting to see if Maradona has made that move to one of the big, big European clubs. Also, keep an eye on his development. Remember this polygon. We'll see how he's looking in three years' time, entering his age of 21. I feel like in Football Manager, players develop just a little bit later now. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if that is the case with Diego here. And, uh, well, shall we go forward? We'll see how he's getting on. And, uh, yeah, 2023. Here we come. Okay, guys, so here we are. The year is 2023. Here we have Diego Maradona, 21 years old, Argentine international, and a Monaco player. Yes, you can see here he's made a big money move, leaving Porto after two years at the club, or one and a half, one and a half years, if you want to be precise, for £54 million. Monaco spending big, but a immediate return scene. You can see here, 24 goals, 10 assists in his first year. Next season, less goals and less assists, but an 8.2 average rating. Less appearances, though, so I think he might have had a few more issues with injuries, uh, maybe in that second season with Porto, but also uh, this year. Well, you can see, actually, this year, currently out with a torn calf muscle. And, uh, yeah, he broke his foot, you can see here, a couple of years ago. Uh, at Porto so a few injury worries I didn't say his injury proneness that high but of course um, Diego Maradona is certainly a player who uh, attracted crunching tackles in his career with his kind of player style you can see looking at his overall attributes now they have improved a lot media description elite attacking midfielder he looks pretty solid, doesn't he, at this point? You can see here, obviously, his technicals and his attacking ability really is standout. He's been trained to play centre mid now. Um, of course, we saw at Porto, they trained him to play as a striker. He's now made that move where they're now training him to play a deeper position. Uh, if we just look at Monaco's schedule, how did they get on this year? Uh, they lost in the Champions League first knockout round to Spurs. They actually lost in the Coupe de la Ligue final to Lyon. And they lost, oh wow, against PSG in the final of the Coupe de France. So lots of defeats there, but lots of wins in the league. Uh, how did they get on? Let's take a look. Wow, okay, that is crazy. They won the league 102 points over, well, PSG's 101. Two teams to break 100 points is absolutely nuts. You can see here, Pellegrini actually the top goal scorer in the division for uh, Monaco. If we just look at this in general, can you see where Maradona is? Actually, Maradona is right up there as well. You can see there, 19 goals for him. Uh, he gets a goal every 89 minutes, which is an absolutely crazy return. And that's off 44 shots. What? Those numbers are absolutely insane. Um, so, yeah, he's been doing well at Monaco. He's won his first piece of silverware there. If we just look at milestones for competitions, you can see um, they finished runner-up in so many competitions this year. Trophy de Champions, uh, the uh, Europa League, they finished runner-up in last year, actually. Uh, he got his first international goal against South Korea. And then, obviously, this year he has won League 1. Uh, just looking at, uh, I guess, landmarks here, you can see uh, got his first international goal against South Korea. Actually made his debut against Brazil. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there will have been a World Cup since we were last here. If we just take a look. Um, yeah, you can see here, I guess he made his debut against Brazil here, if I had to guess. Actually, it might have been the earlier game against Brazil. I think it would have been this one in the World Cup qualifiers. They did qualify for the World Cup. Um, they won every game in the group stage in Qatar. They got put in Qatar's group. If we just look at the stages here... Uh, group A, yeah, they won here. You can see uh, they finished off their group with 16 goals. How did they get on in the second round? They, wow, okay, they lost to I, uh, Ivory Coast after extra time, 3-2. That's pretty shocking. I don't think we're going to be able to get this game because it was a year ago now. But regardless, that is very much them crashing out of the World Cup. As far, Whatever way you look at it, that is, well, it, that is pretty unacceptable. I feel, I feel like there would be riots in the street if Argentina were to lose to um, the Ivory Coast in real life. If we just look uh, again at Maradona, obviously he got that goal against uh, South Korea. He is improving a hell of a lot this year. Obviously he's had his injury troubles towards the end of the season, but his goal scoring return prior to that was absolutely nutty. Um, obviously training to play centre mid now is kind of interesting. If we just look at his information, how has he been picking up the languages? You can see here he's fluent now in Spanish, Portuguese and French. Not quite a club or what? Sorry, world record transfer fee to Monaco of £54 million. In fact, a bit of a bargain if you ask me for that price. 
uh, but obviously he could still make a few moves around. If we just look at his information here, you can see favourite clubs are Boca Juniors and Argentinos Juniors. For his media handling, in this database that I'm using, it's set to outspoken and confrontational. I do wonder if that means he might be a bit more willing to force moves around. Maybe he'll become a bit of a mercenary moving around. Or maybe he's going to settle down at Monaco. Let me know which of those two options you think it will be kind of down in the comments. Obviously, first two years, he's been absolutely superb. In that first year he was at the club, how did Monaco get on? If we just take a look, uh, I guess we'll look at last season's league table just real quick to see how it looked. You can see here, they actually finished third. They got 83 points. We're only three points off the title. It was actually incredibly close between Lyon, PSG and Monaco. Uh, if we look at Monaco's overview here, you can see Pellegrini is their key man. How have they been lining up then? Because Pellegrini, I noticed, was their top goal scorer this season. I need to find a game where I can view uh, the summary one, preferably before he got injured. If we look at the away game against Tottenham, uh, was he injured for this game? Maybe he was already injured for that game. Let's go a little bit further back if we can. Can we go to this Auxerre game? We can. So, uh, yeah, you can see here Monaco playing a 4-4-2 with Maradona actually up top alongside Pellegrini. So kind of becoming a real strike partner there is uh, Diego. Obviously, his kind of complete player style really allows him to play alongside someone like Pellegrini uh, in his team. If we just compare the two, you can see... Uh, Pellegrini a bit more of a complete forward, but obviously Maradona a bit more of a creative outlet. Both two very young players. It will be interesting to see if they form a strike partnership here and are able to really make things work. Of course, next time we'll be here, we'll be having a couple more World Cups to look for through. Maradona is going to be entering his prime, so let me know what you think is going to be happening over the next couple of parts down in the comments. Of course, as I mentioned at the start of the video, leave your suggestions for Legends in FM down below. I think, as I said, every month over on Patreon, uh, we're going to set up a poll where you guys can vote on the legend that we cover for the month. Of course, we may do more than one legend this uh, each month, but uh, I, I want to keep it to a minimum of one a month. I'm not always going to be doing strikers and attackers as well, like Maradona and Pele. Uh, in, in the future, you know, I'd like to do some players like Beckenbauer, maybe you know, and maybe even some kind of more traditional sweepers, some wingers, some fullbacks even. Maybe we'll get Roberto Carlos. Uh, out of the garage, dust him off and see how he'd get on in modern football. I don't know why the image of Roberto Carlos now in a garage is now implanted in my brain, but it's a beautiful image at that. But anyway, guys, that's going to be all from me today. If you have enjoyed this first episode of Diego Maradona, Legends in FM19, slap a like on the video. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.